welcome to the Cinnabar. Now I've been working on a lot of good projects down in the shop, but today is just such an incredible, nice midwinter's day. We just don't get these kind of days in January up here in the high country, so I just couldn't stand it. I had to get out and do a little bit of shooting. And it's already been a pretty good day because we saw some pretty nice muley bucks on the way up here to set up to shoot. As we're coming up to shoot today, I see some dandy bucks standing right there in the trees. Kind of those bigger ones on the left there. I've had several people ask me about doing an episode on the Model 64 Winchester. And, and so I thought, well, because I don't have anything else ready to go, now's the day to do it. My father-in-law, fortunately enough, is a very big fan of the Model 64. So he, he loaned me these uh, 64s out of his collection to, to talk about today and uh, maybe even put them through their paces a little bit. They've been cooped up in the, in the uh, gun safe for a long time. Now these Model 64s, in my opinion, along with their, their cousins, the Model 65, which is an updated version of the 1892, and the Model 71s, which is an updated version of the Model 1886, and of course these 64s are, are a 94. Uh, you know, this was Winchester's really last attempt to make a, real, a higher quality lever action rifle. So these, these were produced in, in, in with the 64s and 71s in roughly time frame of the 1930s through the 1950s. And they're an extremely nice gun. Now these 64s replaced the Model 55. And I did an episode on the Model 55 earlier. Um, we talked about those being primarily takedowns. Well these 64s were all solid frames. As far as I know, I don't believe they ever made a, a takedown version of it. These they put a, a pistol grip on, on them and, uh, and they offered them with a little bit different calibers. Now they started out with just the, the standard 30-30, um, which of course is always the most popular in, in, in this lineup, uh, the 32 Special, the 25-35, and then in 1937 they came out with what collectors have really come to appreciate and covet is this 219 zipper. Now they're all the same cartridge case, they're just necked up or necked down from actually originally from a 3855. And by the way, there are a few, but very few, original 3855 Model 64s. They, they special ordered a few of them. There's some rumors about 3240, but I've never heard of one actually being authenticated. So these these 64s are are really a nice handling gun. Um, they they have st standard with a 24 inch barrel. You could get them with a 20 inch barrel. Much, mo most collectors today call a carbine. Winchester never called them a, a carbine actually. And then the, when they came out with the zippers, the zippers are in two or in, in a 26 inch barrel. So and and these zippers also a lot of them have this bolt peep sight. We'll take a little closer look at that one here shortly. So without further ado, let's uh, let's take a little closer look at these these uh, Model 64s, and then we'll uh, we'll just put them through their paces and see how they shoot. Okay, so how's this for a beautiful lineup of Winchester Model 64s? We'll start in the back here. We'll go from the largest caliber to the smallest caliber. And interestingly enough, in the Model 64, um, the smaller the caliber, the more valuable and more desired they are by collectors. Um, usually it's just the opposite on, on, on most uh, models of Winchesters. But this back one here is is the 32 Winchester Special. Now you'll notice right off that, that it and the 3030 here both have checkered stocks, have um, deluxe sling, sling swivels, uh, grip cap on the pistol grip, and these are what was called by Winchester a deer rifle. A lot of collectors call them deluxes. Um, that's not a term that Winchester used, but that's what most people know them by. Um, this this 32 Winchester Special is a really nice one. You'll also notice that there, all of these are drilled and tapped for a receiver sight. Now they, that was done at the factory and almost all 64s were. The very earliest ones weren't and then they started drilling them. So don't be turned off by that. Usually we don't like to see that in the earlier models, but in a 64 this was a factory um, drill and tap. So don't worry about that. Okay, so we've got this, this deer rifle or deluxe 
64 here and 32 special. The next one's a little bit different and then you'll notice that the barrel's a little shorter. So this one is a 20 inch barrel, um, what most collectors call a carbine. And that, that's a real nice 3030 deluxe carbine on the collector nomenclature. Now we've got a standard 2535. Now the 2535 is actually the least common of the calibers. They actually made a, a few more of the, the uh, 219 zippers than they made 2535. So it's a real difficult one to find. If you're looking to collect the, the Model 64, they don't pass up on a 2535 it's in, if it's in any kind of condition at all. And of course these 219 zippers, we've got a little bit longer barrel. We've got this bolt peep sight. Um, you know, these are just really highly sought after by collectors. They're a really nice gun. Um, you know, a, a varmint cartridge. We've got a 3030 cartridge neck down to 22 caliber. Re just a, a really neat caliber if you want to go out and shoot in this country. What we shoot is ra sage rats and uh, uh, rock chucks and and uh, coyotes and I wish there was a coyote kind of running across the field here, but uh, we haven't managed to spook one up just yet. Okay, so that's enough talking about these rifles. Let's see how they shoot. Now, I loaded these all up beforehand because, like I talked about, they all have the same parent cartridge, so it's really easy to get them mixed up. So I very carefully loaded each of them with their respective uh, caliber because I was really afraid I'd get to yakking here on camera and uh, take some 219 zipper and put them in the 32 or the 30 caliber, and I'm pretty sure that wouldn't work out so good for accuracy. Okay, let's start off with the largest caliber first. We'll do this 3220, excuse me, 32 special. We'll break the ice with one of these right up here close. Oh, <laughs> I like it. That's quite a shower. Okay, we'll try one a little further out. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's try a little steel. It's a little stiff. I don't think this gun's been shot very much. Oh, caught that one. <laughs> like to say I was trying to, but that really wasn't the case. Oh, let's try another jug. We'll try one of those out there a little further. <laughs> That's a good shooting gun right there. Okay, we'll go to this uh, deluxe carbine in 3030 next. Let's try one of these up close right off. <laughs> there we go. We'll shoot right over the top of it at that next one. <laughs> Half of those ended up on my hat. Okay, so this I love 2535. We'll Looks like that jug on the on the target stand's got a little leak in it. it must have got a little shrapnel. We better put it out of its misery right off. <laughs> okay, let's try one of these up a little closer. A <laughs> little bit of steel. And a little further out there. nipped right over the top of it. Couldn't tell if that was red mist or snow. I guess we're going to have to rely on the zipper to get those two longer ones out there. That's what it's for, this varmint rifle. Let's uh, try one out on that first one up close. This bolt peep is a little bit different. But apparently it works. Let's try that one that got away up there. Oh, shot right over it again. There, we're no question about that one. Okay, let's get that other one. <laughs> okay, let's try some steel. And there we are. Boy, that was a lot of fun. These are just wonderful, wonderful rifles. If you ever get a chance, to pick up a Model 64, you know, if it's in decent shape at all and the price is right, don't regret, to, you will never regret buying one of these old girls. What great shooting rifles these things are. 
Well, what a fantastic shooting group of rifles. I really appreciate my father-in-law letting me borrow these beautiful rifles and bring them out here and put them through their paces today. Now, a lot of the information I shared today on the Model 64 came from a wonderful article that uh, my good friend Bert Hartman wrote in the fall 2013 edition, I think it was, of the Winchester Collector Magazine. That's the quarterly magazine of the Winchester Arms Collectors Association. Now, I'm sure you've heard me, if you watch this channel much, plug that association. And the, those magazines alone are worth far more than the price of membership in the association. So if you're interested in Winchesters, join up. You can go back and, and look up that article on the 64s because then you have access online to every one of their magazines for over 40 years worth of incredible information on Winchesters. So we've got some wonderful projects going on down in the shop right now. Um, and so stick around and check back with us over the next couple of weeks. We should have some, some really interesting stuff posted, both in terms of gunsmithing and if we get some more good weather like this, we'll get out and do a little more shooting as well. So until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.